searching for God's will for me. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Another week on the grace of God, the amazing grace of God at work in our life. This this is really causing me to ponder and to and to think. And you know, I was listening to this teacher talk about Mary and how it says she pondered these things in her heart, you know, at the dedication when Simeon blessed the Lord or at the at the birth, at the nativity, you know, and as Jesus grew, she pondered all this in her heart. And the word ponder, we don't really understand really what it says in the Greek. It, it really talks about her cataloging all of this. It's like she kept a record, like a diary of everything that was happening. It was like too amazing. You know, she knew it was the grace. She just said, be it done unto me according unto your word to the angel. And all this got activated and began in her life. And then when Luke came to interview her for the gospel, uh, he went to Ephesus, it's told, and he sat down with her. She was ready to tell the story, the testimony, so that he could record. And he said, I've studied this out diligently. I have gone to witnesses and to, to get the story for you, oh, great Theophilus. So this story is for you, and it's amazing. It's amazing grace. And we have to understand how the amazing grace operates in our life. We talked about in the first uh, program about being saved by grace and growing in grace and then saying grace, grace to the mountain obstacles in our life. And this week, we're going to look at another area that we can grow in grace. And <clears throat> if you have a problem with pride, you've got a real problem. Uh, because it says in James chapter 4, verse number 6, it says, but the, he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit yourself to God. Now, if you're having a problem with pride, I encourage you to meditate on this verse, James 4 and 6, because he gives more grace to the humble. And I want more grace. And I really do know that anything that I've done in my life, and I've done a lot, I'm pushing 70 next birthday, which is crazy amazing. But anyways, I've had a wonderful life serving God since I was a young child. I had a heart toward God, and he began to really fill me with his word and his spirit, and I diligently sought him. And I've been allowed to do great things, and I've been allowed to serve a lot of people, really, as a nurse and as a pastor and now as an evangelist. What a wonderful, wonderful thing the Lord has allowed me to do. And this is because I've humbled myself under the mighty hand of God that in due time he may exalt me. And some will say, Oh, that's bad. You shouldn't want to be exalted. I only want to be exalted if he exalts me. The problem with pride is that people exalt themselves. And I am Italian, and there's an Italian word for pride, and it's called superbia. They think they are superb, that they are above anybody else. And it's it's big in the culture. And I think it's big around the world. It, it just is people compete with people. That's not God's plan. God wants to exalt you. But you must humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in due time he would exalt you. And there's a funny joke that I have in my family, and my wife hates this joke. <laughs> So please don't mention this to Peggy. But, um, you know, we'll be talking about something going on and, you know, and I'll say, oh, I said, it's so hard for me to be humble because God's given me so many gifts and talents. I says, you don't know what I go through with all these gifts and talents and how humble. And oh, if I ever want to press her button, that'll do it. So don't tell her, please. But, you know, there is a little bit of grain of truth in that, that I have had a lot of wonderful things happen, a lot of great ministry opportunities, but not because I thought along those lines, but because really before anything happened, I used to have to go through hell. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. Every step of my growth has been preceded by tribulation. And it, it's through tribulation we inherit the promises of God. We enter the kingdom. But I used to think the steps of a good man were on a level thing. But I think the steps are like stair steps that you climb in your relationship with God, one step up after another. And I really have had to go through some things. And sometimes I just, it, I was baffled by it. But I really believe that he had to remove some things out of my life in order to exalt me, in order to put me in a preferred position and give me an honor. But I will tell you this, I don't ever want to live it again. But I'm grateful that I did live through it. It, it really did shave a lot of flesh off of me. And, and 
one time I developed this, I, I mean, I'll share with you my weakness in order to show you why I believe God has been so gracious to me, that I was planning this big nursing seminar. I was in charge. I was the nurse recruiter, and we were getting nurses from all over the southern part of Michigan to come. And it was a big deal. And I worked at the medical center, and they had a lot of influence, and we were able to really invite people. And all of a sudden, I got anxious about it. I mean, I developed such an anxiety that lasted for like a month, and then I took a long time to heal that I really developed like like what they call agoraphobia or, or fear in the marketplace. I just was anxious. And only God saw me through. You know, I would even go to church. Anytime I'd be sitting in a crowd and I have to sit there, <laughs> like this anxiety would just like, like an anxiety attack, you know. And all I can say is that all I had was God and his word and his spirit. My flesh couldn't overcome that. I don't know how to describe it. It's probably an evil spirit sent to torment me, but or maybe allowed to torment me. And all I could do was pray in the spirit and and stand and you know and but I would look for that crack and God would make a way of escape for me so that I could bear it. But I learned that it wasn't about my personality or how I looked or you know, or any part of what I feel was, you know, me. It was about the purifying of God's Spirit coming through me to minister through people. And part of my flesh had to be burnt off, and it was not pleasant. I'm telling you, it lasted for a couple of years, really. And even now, there's like a remnant of the thing. And just to remind me, I can see the scar. <laughs> You're nobody without my spirit, my word, my positioning. You know, where do I want you so you can have peace and be strong in me and know that I've placed you there and, and confidence. my confidence is in God. My confidence is not in me or my personality or anything. My confidence is in God. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray because obedience is better than sacrifice. And had I obeyed, I don't think I would have had to go through as much. But I really probably persisted in thinking I was something until I finally surrendered. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to give more grace to the humble. I ask you to help the people to be humble and to be obedient to your will for their life so they don't have to sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I do love you. I've prayed with all my heart for you. Drop me a line, frankjulian5 at gmail.com. And tune in next week and tell a friend about the program. Bye for now. On behalf of Frank Julian Ministries, we want to say thank you so much for listening. We upload podcasts every Thursday on Roku, YouTube, and audio podcasts. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. If you need prayers or seeking a prayer community, we're here for you. Come join us on our Facebook page, Love, Prayers, and Healing Podcasts with Pastor Frank. See you next week.